All right, yeah, what up? Uh, welcome back. Here we go again, Mongo Chatter number five. Today we got Josh Longden, aka Trippy Stoner. Is it? Do you do you know that heads at Amesbury Skate Park lovingly refer to you as Trippy? Is that is that legit? My name is in my bio on my Instagram, and no one knows my name. Everyone just calls me Trippy Stoner. I don't know. I think Trippy Stoner is a good one, dude. Yeah, uh, I once I changed my Instagram name to that, it was just like stuck. <laughs> it's a good one. It, it's nice. That's a weird thing where it's like, yeah, I've had that. I've had that a bunch, just especially in the skating world where it's like, I feel like because of Instagram, you almost it's almost like you already know someone or you already met them before you even really meet them in real life. You know what I mean? And then you skate with them and you're just like. You're like, oh, fucking, what's your, you know, like, for me, it's usually like, I'll skate with someone, this is, this has happened to me before, I'll skate with someone, I won't know, whatever, and I'll be, I won't know their name, and I'll be like, yo, what's up, I'm John, and they're like, yo, what up, I'm Josh, and I'm like, yeah, I'll send you these clips, whatever, blah, 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 what's your Instagram handle, and then they'll say, I'm Trippy Stoner, I'll be like, oh, shit, I already follow you, do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah it's kind of funny. that's just it's 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 funny sometimes because i'll go places that i would have thought no one would know who i am and people are just like yo you're trippy stoner right and i'm like oh shit yeah yeah <laughs> i was like yeah that that's me well you got a you got a uh a recognizable like vibe style I the first her. time i knew you was when you i met you at tgs day when you were doing those dump trucks off the fence yeah, I actually want to go back and get that soon. My friend gave me an idea about taking like a little two by four yeah. and taking um like zip ties and zip tying that shit to the top of the fence. So when I put my board in some truck position, I'm on the piece of two by four and I'm not getting stuck every time I yank out. Oh uh, hell yeah, that's legit. Do you do a lot of like spot doctoring? Like, will you do you do that type of shit with two by fours yeah. or bondo or whatever? I uh, yeah, there's a uh, where where I grew up skating, Lawrence. All of our spots are like really fucking crusty. Yeah. So like a lot of shit I had to like fix myself because a lot of people didn't want to skate it. They're like, yeah, no, that's just mad fuck. I'm not skating that shit. I'm like, all right, so if I fix it, we'll we'll go can we go film. <laughs> <laughs> that's DIY to the core. So you grew up in Lawrence and you you live in I, you live in Lowell now. I actually live in Lawrence again. I grew up oh, in. Oh, okay. Some, yeah, I grew up in Samoa until I was 12, and then I lived in New York for a couple of years, and then I ended up moving to Mass, and I've been here since I was probably like 15. Dude, um, not to sound ignorant, but like, I, I guess I should know this, but I don't. Like, where geographically in the world is Samoa? I've heard, like, I hear about it, I've heard of it, but I don't really it, know where it is. <laughs> Honestly. It's like, um, it's, it's kind of, it's like in the middle of the fucking ocean. <laughs> honestly oh south it's kind of south like a pacific bunch of islands like south pacific i believe so yeah there's a there's a lot of shit that i used to that i missed from back there probably what's a what's the first thing that comes to mind surfing surfing the last time i yeah the last time i surfed was probably when i lived in samoa oh damn dude you should take it up yeah, it's going it go it's going there's a lot of people into it around here man Weirdly, you don't really think of this part of the world as surfing, but it's like it's wicked popular around here, man. Yeah, I know. For the long, the longest time, I've always wanted to like go and try around here. I just never have had like the the motivation. I recently went. <laughs> I don't even know if I would say that I would say that if I went surfing. I I went with my friend who surfed, and I went in the water with a surfboard. <laughs> And just basically got fucking smacked around, like, you know, paddle out, <laughs> try to sit there, try to catch it's a like wave. It's like skateboarding, though, sometimes. That's how I feel about it. Yeah, yeah. It's like, if you have fun, that's all there is. Matters. My buddy said, um, he goes, the thing about surfing, he goes, you'll never have as much fun sucking at something. <laughs> like, it's like, you know what I mean? You're just getting thrown around and getting soaked and you're not... You know, like you're not going to be good at it right off the bat, but it's still no. it, it feels good to do. It's like it's it's uh, for I don't know. It's weird because like you're used to skate. You're used to a certain level of satisfaction from skating, and it's like yeah, I, you know I 
should have been frustrated because I suck so bad at surfing, but it was actually really fun. <laughs> if that makes sense. So we're talking about surfing and stuff a little bit, but you were saying you were skating for seven years. Is that what you said? Seven years, yeah, now. What do you got going on these days, man? You've been out skating, <laughs> filming, or what's uh, what's the scoop? What's going on in your world? Uh, before this whole epidemic thing, I was actually going to move to California, but my flight got canceled and all that shit. Oh, my god! So gosh. I ended up having to fucking... And it was horrible, too, because I was like... I like my lease was up for my apartment. I quit my job. Okay. Everything. I mean, I guess different people feel different way about it, but one way of looking at it is like, in a sense, it's kind of like game on right now. Like, there's a lot of shit you could do. And I've uh, I've already noticed. Like today, I was there's a lot of stuff that I was kind of like. I guess I slept on some shit, dude. Like I had some shit in my mind that I saw. And then, like, I was driving around today, and, you know, I live mad close to, New, <coughs> like, New Hampshire. So, I feel like New Hampshire's, like, they're, like, fully, like, back. Like, they're, like... Yeah. Like, businesses um, are open. So... Mm -hmm. Everything. I, I feel like I missed some opportunities, because now shit in New Hampshire that I eyeballed that I didn't... I mean, I did skate some stuff, but stuff that I missed out on, it's like, ah, I guess you got to go back on a Sunday or something. Yeah, I feel you. There's actually... There's actually this rail in Salem that I've been wanting to skate for a while. And um, my one of my friends that lives out there was like, yo, I'll take you, go skate it. And then the next day he hit me up like, oh, we're going to have to wait for the weekend. I was like, why? He's like, because they just opened everything back up in New Hampshire. So the, the office building is probably open again. Yeah, that's wild. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> I was like, that's what I get for fucking slacking. Yeah, yeah, I had the same feeling. Like I slept on a couple things. Or, but, you know. I try not to um I try not to be hard on myself about that like uh, it, it's a fine line of like being productive and then also just putting this sort of like unnecessary pressure on yourself especially where it's like I don't know I'm not a professional I don't it's not like no one's like waiting on footage from me or anything so it's just like if I if I don't feel motivated one day I don't I try not to beat myself up about it but at the same time yeah. It's kind of in my nature to like be like, dude, like like ride myself. Wanna, you, know? you just want to shred. Yeah, I just yeah. want to stay on top of like I I just I always want to be doing something semi productive or creative or be working on some type of something down yeah. a yeah. goal. You always know? having something to do, so you're not just sitting around bored. Yeah. Well, don't I feel like it makes um I I always I, I know a lot of people don't like it, but I like going out and filming it, it like it creates like it gives like the skating like a purpose you're like all right we're gonna drive to this specific spot yeah. to do this thing and it's like if you if it was just you and your buddies and you weren't and you weren't filming anything you were just dicking around in your hometown you might not drive to some random fucking spot just to do one thing you know and it's like uh -huh. Like, yeah, you might not have needed to do that to drive all that 45 minutes just to go to one little thing but the time that you had on the way there, the conversation, or maybe you stopped and got lunch or, you know, smoked a doobie or whatever it was like you have a memory, you had an experience of going out to get that trick versus just, you know, farting around with your friends at the skate park again, you know, not, yeah. not to hate on that's the how skate I feel park, about it. So. What's that? Oh, no, no. I, I love, I love skating parks. I love skating parks. Yeah. But when it comes to, skating street it's just like a whole nother like it's a whole nother level of just fun to me yeah because you could go to skate parks and no matter what skate park you go to for the most part especially in massachusetts a lot of our skate parks are built somewhat the same yeah so it's all the same stuff the situate concrete but yeah. you go yeah and you go to you go i could go skate street somewhere and like a trick i learned on a, on this like crappy brick ledge at the skate park I could take to a beautiful marble ledge in the, in like the middle of Boston or something. Yeah. My favorite thing about filming that makes it more, or like skating street in general, like more than being in a skate park is like, it's all, like you were saying, it's always an adventure. You can go to the skate park every day and it's always going to be the same homies doing the same shit. Right. But when you guys go skate street, it's, you're in a completely different environment. It's, it's, it's an adventure. Yeah. And that's like one of my favorite things about being able to, skateboard and film is like every trip 
to skate a spot is a new adventure. Yeah. And like the physical, the physical and the mental aspect of it too, when it comes to street skating, where it's like, <clears throat> you know, if you're trying to trick on an obstacle and it's like, I, I like this, it's like, it can be annoying too, but it's kind of like, I like the challenge of it where it's like, you're in the street, you want to do something. You don't know if you can do it. You try it a few times, you mess it up and now you're getting close and you're ready and you're, you're all dialed in, but wait a minute here comes an old lady with a shopping cart. And so now you're, that's like, just cause you're ready. Doesn't mean the street's ready. So now you're there with your mental game already, but now you got to wait for the street to get back. It's kind of like mm-hmm. surfing, like surfing's like that. Like the, you're waiting for the wave to come just cause, yeah. just cause you're ready. Doesn't mean that there's a wave, you know? So you got to yeah, like just find you're... that little moment and just, and then that's it's Like, I love that about oh, yeah. street skating, you know? It's cool. That's something that my grandfather used to say to me. He's like, just remember when you go surf, you might be ready for the wave, but that doesn't mean the waves are ready for you. Yeah, yeah, man. I learned my lesson with that. That shit. That's is... why. I'd... I've gotten knocked down a couple times. On the, the, well, basically, I've probably been surfing a handful of times, and I feel like each of those times, in one way or another, I got my ass handed to me. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Um, just, yeah, I got a lot of respect for that shit. Like, um, I know like skating and there's like a real like hardcore image and it is, you know, like to a certain degree, it's like, you know, like you're always fucking bleeding and hurt and like, there's a, there's a hardcore element to skating. I feel like, but dude, these people that are like my friend, when I went surfing with him, it's like you're waking up super early in the morning and then you're like, you know, just to get out into the water and shit, like just to put on your wetsuit, it's like, it's a physical, it's you're a like, mission. yeah, dude, it's a mission. And there's so much like, like it's not, it's not for the, it's not for the week period. You know, it's not for the people. It like, it's not like I, I was like, damn, I don't, I, I guess once you start doing it every day and you get in the groove, you enjoy it and you get good at it and you get in good shape. Yeah. But I was just like, woof, man, this is like, I'd rather just be, yeah, I'd rather just be pushing on some (laughs) concrete, you know what I mean? (laughs) Like, um, I'm pretty healthy. I mean, I'm not the healthiest fucking person, I'll tell you that. I eat fucking burgers and fucking burritos for a living. Same, same, same. (laughs) But like, you know, motherfuckers, people are on YouTube eating pods, Tide Pods and shit. (laughs) And I'm like, what are you guys doing with your lives? (laughs) seriously dude yeah bro think about your wheels like think about where your wheels have been dude you know what i mean come on like i i (laughs) i get fucking dusted every time i skate i get folded i come home my hands are fucking probably darker than the bottom of my wheels i'm saying like my palms right now are just you know i open up my palms on the concrete and it's like i'm supposed to be worried about washing my hands but i'm fucking bleeding something about skateboarders that I feel like a lot of people don't realize is our bodies are used to all these bloody cuts and having dirt in them and germs. Yeah. Like we're used, our bodies used to having open cuts and having to heal them. And I just feel like when we fall or get a cut or whatever, get a shinner and your, your, your shin splits open, it's just like our immune systems are used to the, like the bacteria and shit. You, you fucking, you go outside, you skate, you fall, whatever you come home, Take a fucking shower. Wash your hands before you eat food. That's it. Like simple shit like that. Simple shit. It's like as long as you're aware, as long as you have that awareness, it's like you really don't have much to be worried about in this situation. Right. But that's just from my perspective. Like if you got hurt skating and you had to end up in the ER and then caught coronavirus that way on some bullshit just because you happen to be in the hospital, you know what I mean? That would be super shitty. That's... That's one place where I, I feel like a lot of people fucking may have got it. There's a fucking hospital. Yeah. And before this, before this shit, I ain't fuck with hospitals. I fucking, I've like, a couple of my fingers are like, so I have this finger right here that I like fucking wrote over one. Like when I was younger, I like wrote over my finger and I fucking, it, it like bent sideways. Like my like finger isn't straight. Like my fucking shit is like sideways at the top and like, 
I never went to the hospital for it. I grabbed that shit and fucking yanked it. Yep. Just cracked it back in the spot. And like now, like I can like take my finger and like bend it and my nail and my, my finger will be straight for like a minute or two. And then it slowly just makes its way back to being sideways. Yeah. And it's just because I never went to, I don't fuck with hospitals in general. I'm not a hospital person. Yeah, I do. I'm, like I'm not in hospitals either. I spent a lot of time in them over the years, but I fucking I do not like it. It's like probably my least favorite place to be in the world is at a hospital. Yep. <laughs> Unless I'm skating Especially outside, you know. <laughs> <laughs> skating the spots. Unless it's a good spot, yeah, you know, which hospitals usually are actually. Sure. And like that's the thing throughout this the pandemic or whatever, like I've like like, dude, I you know, I'm always driving around looking at spots and shit, but, like, I don't know, like, not to be super paranoid or whatever, but I don't know if I would skate at a hospital right now. Just, like, it's too, it's a little too close for comfort for me, you know? Like, people coming yep. and going, you know? Today, my friend wanted to get a trick on, um, uh, at the hospital in Lawrence. There's, like, a, it's basically on the top of a fucking giant hill. Yeah. And he wanted to, he wanted to do a trick like off the curb into the hill and bomb the hill. Yep. And I was like, y'all can go after you drop me off at my house. <laughs> Cause that's, I was like, the closest I'll get to a hosp- to that hospital, bro, is the skate park. Cause the skate park is separated by like a, a hill and a river. Yep. Besides that, I ain't going, I ain't going past that. On the other side of that river, I won't go. Well, I was just, dude, I was just driving around randomly and I was driving down 133 and I found myself in downtown Lawrence and like, this was like probably like a month ago or something. And I was like, I was definitely a lot more panicked and it was when it was first starting to get nice out and stuff. So I'm driving around, I got my windows down and shit. But then like, as I got to, I was at a red light and I got to the hospital. I'm like, put my windows up. I'm like, nope, dude. Like as I'm going up that hill, I'm like, put my windows up, dude. I'm like, fuck that. Which I know is like, it, that, that doesn't even make any sense. But it was just, that was the, it was like, it's the fear talking, you know? But like, yeah, exactly. but like, why, I don't know why, uh. You know, it's like, why why go out of your way to hang out at a hospital right now if you don't have to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Unless it's your job, then, like, fuck it, you know? Yeah, and that's, and right now, I would say, that's a, I would think that's the worst fucking place to have a job. Yeah. Because it's like, that's just, like, asking to get sick, if you ask me. Dude, I know a lot of um, friends, skaters, people I know. Um, that they're like their significant other, their girlfriend or their wives or whatever are like nurses. And I have like friends that are nurses and shit. And it's like, it's hardcore shit, man. That's like, man, those people are fucking brave, dude. I just don't really, the only reason I like hospitals is because I just feel like that's a place to fucking get sick no matter what fucking, what's going on in the world. Totally. I've always felt like, even like when you just walk through them, like the way that they smell, like there's no fresh air in there. You're just like, it's like, it's fucking sick in here. Like, it's like, it's sickly. Yeah. It's like it doesn't, you know. It's just like a, 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 like a, like a heavy dark vibe whenever you go into a hospital. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and you know, obviously <laughs> we need them and like, much love and respect to those that go work there oh, and hold course. it down, you know, nothing, not trying to, but I know what you're saying. It's just the vibe of like, it's, it's a place where you'd prefer not to be if you could help it. You know yeah. what I mean? That's how I Cause feel. Cause most of the people there aren't there cause they want to fucking be unless they work there. Yeah. Most people that you see in a hospital are fucking hurt, sick or fucking the worst probably dying. Well, it's like I fucking roll, I fucking sprain my ankle. I need a fucking... I just need a fucking cast and I'm next to some dude in a bed who's got fucking a thousand fucking wires attached to him and shit. And I feel like back to kind of what we're saying, and this is kind of one of the things that bums me about him too, because it eventually takes on this certain energy where it's like the people that work there, and this is, I'm not trying to, I'm not faulting them, but I know that this is, and I've talked to, like I've talked to friends and I've dated girls and I've 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 this is a th- a thing that happens whereas if you're a nurse for a while and you see this shit day in day out you get desensitized to it and so it's like you know it's a sad thing sometimes in healthcare where people go into healthcare and they want to help people they're these empathetic people that they just all they want to do is help other humans and then they go through their career and they eventually they're, they're, they're like hardened to people because they've, 
they've seen so many people get hurt and die and shit that it's like, you know what I mean? I can't, sp- I'm not trying to uh, speak for anyone, but I'm just saying I've had these conversations with people where that's, that can happen. You know, it's like you're, you don't, you, not that you don't give a fuck, but I mean, how many times if you see fucking death day in, day out after a while, it, it, it's it just, it's it, it makes you like, uh, yeah. So after a while, it's like, it's just, like, I know what you mean. It's like, it's hard to feel empathetic for something that you see day in and day out. Something that's become natural to you. I had a, uh, a slice of life, a slice of life moment, man. I was dog sitting. I had a, a, a friend of a friend. She went away and I was watching her dog and I was in San Francisco. And I went to North Beach in San Francisco and I'm walking the dog. And there's this commotion. And a surfer had drowned. And they were pulling this guy out of the water and everything. And, you know, as I'm coming back with the dog, I'm coming back toward, it's like um, like Land's End, San Francisco. It goes down to North Beach. And I'm coming up by, like, there's like a seawall. And they had an ambulance there and everything. <clears throat> and uh, I just had this little slice of life moment where, I kind of overheard the cop and the paramedic talking to each other. And um, so they're wheeling the body, you know, to the ambulance. And the cop and the, the paramedic were like, like flirting with each other, like hitting on each other. Just like, like as they're loading this body, you know, like I, I forget exactly what he said to her, but it was like, he was definitely trying to put it down. Like the, like the cop was trying to like talk to this paramedic and they were like flirting back and forth as they're like loading this gurney into the thing. And it was just like, it was so like I, and I'm just kind of sitting there with the dog watching it all. I'm like tripping out on how, you know, not judging them, but I'm just like, man, that's like, they do this shit so much that it's like, it's not, it's like nothing. It's like, you know, I'm That's like, I'm crazy, walking dude. 50 yards out of the way with the dog. Like, oh, it's a body. Oh, and they're just like fucking so <laughs> chill about it. You know what I mean? Unless it's me, like, I don't mind being hurt and bleeding and shit. But other than that, I'm mad squeamish. Like, I, it's fucking weird. Like, I don't even like, um, especially simulated gore. Like, I've, I've, like... Even real violence and real gore doesn't bother me as much as when I watch it on TV. If it's like super realistic, like people on like a movie and someone's getting their entrails blown apart and shit. Like I'm like, oh, that's it's too much for me. But <laughs> but like real like um, blood, especially my own, it doesn't really bother me. It's It's kind of weird. I don't know. Yeah, I grew up like my grandfather was like a like a butcher when I was younger. Oh, okay. So like he all all he ever did was fucking chop up animals and surf. So I was like that's what I was around growing up. Damn. He fucking he was always in the woods and shit hunting. So it was like it was different like cuz now that I live here it's like everything I learned about life on growing up on an island is like doesn't fucking apply to living in a city (laughs) yeah there's so much you can learn about like yourself and the world and stuff like just from skating you know what i mean just from you know it's kind of for real i don't know if honestly if i never started skateboarding i have no idea what i would be doing my life right now yeah uh like skateboarding was like a fucking savior that shit gave me like a purpose something to do with my life yeah, man, you really you're really passionate about it, dude. It's like that's that's what I really like too. Is like I like being around people that are like passionate about skating because it's like I'm from the time where everyone who skated was really passionate about it. You know what I mean? It was like if you bothered to do it, you were fucking all in. You were like, doing it, yeah, all in, for all life, the, all you know? in, all day. Yeah, like a lot, you know. And now I feel like it's a little bit more like. You know, it's, you could, you could get in a lane and like fucking go for the gusto and like, it's, it doesn't have to be as much of a lifestyle. It's like, it could be a sport if you wanted to make it a sport, you know, but like, uh, 
I just I like I like skating with people that are passionate and are just down and fucking into skating for the sake of skating, you know. I never started skateboarding to get sponsored or to make money or to get free stuff. It was just something that interested me and then became something that it was like pat like you were saying, it's a passion. It's something that I it just grew on me to the point where if I don't do it, I don't feel like I'm myself. Yeah. One thing I can say for me is like there's there's never been if I really think about it, it's like it's never been casual with me. There's it's there's never been there's never been, I've never dabbled in it. Ever since like I first this is the first time I did it, it was just like and even like when I was super little and I guess this is about as casual as I got cuz I was like you know, when you have, you're a little kid, you have your knee on the board, like the knee yeah. on the board, and you push it like that. I remember yeah. I was a kid, and I fucking, <laughs> I like, you know, I was like small, dude, like five years old, and I couldn't stand up on the board, so I was pushing it like that, and I uh, I hit like a crack in the sidewalk, and I was going so slow that I just went, jabunk, and put my face oh. on the board like that, and then Ooh. like, but still had the 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 muscle working to where I pushed with my leg, so I just basically dragged the grip tape down my face, like I went <sighs> and just like <laughs> like oh, scraped man. my face off, dude. And that was like, you know, ever since then I've just been going full bore, <laughs> like you know what I mean, like that's fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's never been like. Uh, Oh yeah, like I'll oh, fucking you know, like I fucking skateboard. I play fucking like I don't even know. Like people, it's weird. Like people, I know what like, you mean because like you know when it's when like I, first... I play tennis, I do skateboard, I got play water polo. It's like no nah, fucking dude, I just I just skate and that's about it. Like I might yep. go snowboarding if it's cold out because it resembles skateboarding. You know that was like in New England. Like yeah, I might get interested in snowboarding a little bit i guess but really if i fucking lived in florida or california or something i wouldn't fucking fuck with snowboarding dude it's just like that's it's ridiculous you know that's yeah that's like how it was for me like my <laughs> like my first year of skateboarding uh I, I used to be in a band and shit and like i played music before i started skateboarding and after skating for like a year i like dropped everything music like what did you since then what did I, you uh do in the band uh vocals and i played bass oh damn what type of what type of shit uh like uh, <laughs> uh like kind of like like heavy shit uh, yeah. more, uh i'm trying to, i'm trying to think of something to compare it to um a little bit like uh it was probably like a mix between like motionless and white and like Attila, uh, I'm not. So it was is like, that like is this like some grindcore or shit? Like Attila, it, what is this? So uh, Attila, Attila is a is sick name the, though. Attila is, I think their genre is called partycore. Partycore. Yeah. Okay. That's a so good it's, vibe. It's, that was like one of the first like heavier bands I ever listened to, and that shit was what got me into like playing like heavy ass music and shit. Yeah. Damn, it's funny. I kind of forgot that you were like a metalhead and shit, dude. I, I forgot. most people do. I forgot. Most about people that. see me, and like they see the people that I skate with, and they they just expect that I all they listen to is like hip hop. Sure. It's funny because I like barely listen to rap music. That's I barely funny. listen to rap music. Like when people ask me, like, "Oh, what do you listen to?" I'm like, Johnny Cash, uh, Elvis Presley, yeah, Billy Joel, yeah. And they're like, "What the fuck? What?" I'm like, yeah, man. I was like, I don't know what you expect me to say. Yeah. Like, I don't like a, a lot of my friends listen to like Lil Wayne and like Eminem and all these rappers. And like, the only reason I know these songs that come out is because my friends listen to them. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, if I had it my way, I probably would have never got into rap music if I didn't hang out with a lot of these kids. Yeah. Dude, it's funny. I'm like more of a classical. I like like old school rock and roll and shit. I like I like all kinds of music. I feel I feel more of a connection with like punk rock. 
I guess is like where it all what what that's what empowered me to have a piece of music for myself. Like so many people, you know, it's like it's easy to fall into a band and just like you know, you're playing, you're making a t-shirt, you're booking your own tour, you're driving around with your friends, you're playing with other bands. It's like in the world of punk rock, it's real easy. Again, the passion. It's like all about the passion, you know? So I yep. I love that. But I also, my whole life, I've actually been into hip hop my whole life because just always watching it on TV, like Yo MTV Raps. I'm, I'm, I'm about to be 40 and like basically that's like how old, like, commercial rap is you know what i mean like uh you know been listening to rap since like 85 or 86 and it's just uh it's been it's been so like no matter how into punk or whatever i got i was always still listening to hip-hop but at a certain point i will say i kind of checked out like maybe 2014, 2012, like it, it, I'm not as into the modern stuff now. Um, yeah. Where it's at right there's, now. I can't really understand the trap. Honestly, of like, yeah, there's a, uh, probably out of like the newer, the new age rappers, there's probably like only four people that I listen to consecutively. Everyone else is, if you play it and I like the song, I'll, I'll, that's just getting downloaded on my phone. Yeah, yeah, that's sick. But that's... Like, for the most part, like I'm, all, I've always been like, if I do listen to hip hop, I like like '80s, '90s hip hop, like Big L, Biggie, hell yeah, stuff like that. I feel like too, and like I said, like I went off on my like. In some ways, it kind of like pulled me away from skating, like the whole punk rock thing, because it's like a lot of the people in that did not skate, and you're spending time in these little rooms playing music. You're not out there skating. But um, I feel like, too, there's this thing, too, with skaters where it's like it's so carefree. It's like, like you said, like people are going to expect that you listen to hip-hop, or people will probably be like, oh, fucking dude, like expect me to listen to like No Effects or Pennywise or some shit, you know? But it's like, actually, dude, like I like that fucking song, like uh, Royals by Lord. You know what I mean? Like, that's a good song. Yep. Like, that is a good song, actually. Like, I just like a good song. I don't care if it's fucking Gigi exactly. Allen or Whitney Houston. Like, a good song is a good song, you know? So, and I feel like skaters are like that. And I think it's from videos, too. Like, you're just like, it's like, there's so many songs that would probably be whack to me. But when I hear them, I'm just like, I think of a certain skate video and I'm like, oh my God, mm-hmm. like fucking uh, Jamie Thomas skated to fucking. I will survive. And that's like, that song is like, I, it, that song is like hard as nails to me. Cause it's like Jamie Thomas skated to it in fucking heavy metal. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, it's like a shit. I don't know. When you got into the whole punk rock scene, it's, you felt like it kind of took you away from skateboarding a little bit. In a way. For me, I, pl- I played music first. So like when I started skateboarding, it was like that passion I had for playing music kind of all drifted into skateboarding. And it was like, I got to the point where I have band practice and I was, I fucking just skipped school and I was at the skate park for fucking eight hours. Band practice at four o'clock when everybody gets out of school. I'm still at the skate park skating and I completely forgot I even had practice. And yeah. That's the point where everybody was like, yo, like you gotta, you gotta figure out what you're gonna do, man. You gotta keep skateboarding. You're gonna play music. And one day I was just like, I'm, I'm gonna skateboard, bro. I was like, I just don't have as much fun as I used to playing music. Yeah. Like all my, all my enjoyment and passion just fell into skateboarding. That is another weird thing about like people that are like super passionate about shit is like, I think sometimes people don't understand. Like, I know what you're saying. Like I would feel at times where it'd be like, like when I was in Seattle, like, okay, I play in a band. I live with my girlfriend. I have a job and I'm a skateboarder. So it's like on an every different, on any given day, like, I got to like hang out with my girlfriend, go to work, skate, play in a band. And it's like all those things are great, but I would start to feel pressure and stressed out from trying to go from one thing to the next. And like, I feel like for 
people that are super passionate like that that can happen a lot where we put this pressure on ourselves and other people would just be like dude just enjoy it it sounds great like yeah playing in a band skateboarding like that just sounds like fun but it's like when you're a super passionate person like yes it's fun but it's also like it's like work in a way like you're you're giving you're mm -hmm. you're giving yourself to this thing yeah. you know you're putting your all into it, whatever you do yeah and when you have more than one thing that you do it's it sometimes gets hard to fucking put all your because you want to put all your energy into this one thing and then you you finish and you're like oh shit i gotta do this now yeah and then you're like fuck i want to do this but i kind of want to do this more yeah and it gets i know what you mean it's like that pressure that you feel like uh like it's just i, I that's happened to me a couple of times like i used to fucking teach art classes and shit and like I stopped doing that because I felt like I wasn't getting to skate as much. Mm. And it's like, I just want to skateboard. <laughs> I just want to ride my skateboard. Yeah. I love drawing and shit too, but I just, I would, no matter what I try to like find as a second hobby, nothing compares to the passion I have from being on my board. Even and, just riding down the street feels great. And you know what too, man, if you think about it, it's like, if you think about it almost like, you know, practically, pragmatically, whatever is like, None of us are getting any younger and not to talk shit, but you could take up art when you're 45, 50 years old. You might as well, you might as well skate and get broke off and do your thing now in your twenties because fucking, yeah. you know what I mean? Like that's not to be like dramatic, but why not look at it that way? That's the way I've that's always looked at it. It's like, I'm going to be a skateboarder yeah. now. I got my whole life to be a fucking old man. I'll be an old man when I'm an old man. You know what I mean? I'm, yeah. For now, I'm just skating, like, as long as I can, you know? Yeah, because, fuck, I could be fuck, I could be 50, and I can't, I could be in a wheelchair. I could still play bass, and I could still draw. That's what I'm saying, yeah. You know? Um, I don't know, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm some, some days, I've, I, I, feel, I'm, I feel like I'm falling apart. I'm only 40, you know what I mean? It's you think about what it'll be like when you're 60 or 70, what your body will feel like. It's like, damn, that's going to be fucking painful. I'm 26. And when I, when I, when I think about being 36, I'm like, Oh man. Yeah. I'm going to be, I'm going to be fucking walking with crutches. <laughs> I think though too, like it's not as bad as you think it will be because <clears throat> like, I know what you mean when I was 26, I, I mean, I always said that I'll skate forever, but like if I thought about what 36 would be like, ugh, it, it wasn't a pretty picture. But now that I've made it from 36 and I'm almost to 40, I think I could definitely see myself skating at 46. I think you, um, I feel that. like, I think you learn how to, maybe you learn how to fall or slam better or you like, like I like people that don't skate, they definitely trip out when you're in your 30s and 40s and you skate and shit because they're like, "What if you get hurt?" Da da da. Like you don't you don't have health insurance or whatever, and you're just like, "I know how to fall. I've been doing this since I was a kid." It's more about like, yeah, it's dangerous. You can fall on concrete, but it's like, um, my body's used to it. It's not like like it's different for me to fall on concrete right now to eat shit and fall on concrete like yeah it's going to suck I'm 40 years old but compared to another 40 year old that doesn't skate that person is going to be like they're not going to be able to walk for a couple of weeks they're going to be like oh my god mm -hmm. I fell down like they're going to be talking about it at next Thanksgiving <laughs> like I fell down and it was terrible that one time where it's just like if you skate and you fall down you're like fucking whatever you know yeah. like Fuck it. Got to get back up. Yeah. Like, it's not even, you don't even think about it. You know what I mean? This is mm -hmm. like, 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 life's going to go on in an instant, you know? And I, I, know what you mean. I think, too, like, if, if I were to stop skating, I would get old fast. Like, that I feel. You know what I, I mean? I feel that. Like, if you just, if you were to stop skating right now, like, all of a sudden, like, I feel like you would just, like, your body would be like, age just quickly go to shit. like you yep. wither you like <laughs> you know oh like i usually skate through the winters this past winter i barely skated yep and one of the first times i got back on my board i literally like did a kickflip on flat got wheel bite hit the ground and went right back inside my house 
Oh. Never in my whole my whole life of skateboarding have I ever just fallen and like not wanted to be on my skateboard again. Yeah, I fell and I was like, "Fuck this, I'm done. Yeah. I'm not today." I was like, "That hurt so bad," and like my friends would be like, "Dude, you felt mad soft." I was like, "It didn't feel like it." Yeah, it did not feel like it. It felt like I just fell down as like a six set. Yeah. I'm good. I I'll, I'll come back outside tomorrow. Yeah. It took me like a good like two or three weeks of like falling consistently for my body to get back into the the feeling of being able to hit the ground and just get back up without thinking about it do you do anything other besides skating like as far as any type of physical activity or fitness or any shit like that since the quarantine thing just in uh, general yeah I guess, actually or... well before the quarantine no i didn't do anything but skate yeah but yeah. now like since there's some days that i'm i'm just like I'm still like kind of getting back to it, and uh, there'll be times where my friends will be like, they only want to go skate in one place, and I'm like, I'm not going because there's gonna be a thousand people there. I'm good. Yeah. Like every time my friends want to go skate like uh, a park in Lowell, I know for a fact it's always packed, and I'm like, no, nah, I'm good because all it takes is one of those old ladies with their kid to be sick. I'm good. Yeah, nope. yeah. So yeah. it's like, I I like. I, I do push-ups now. I do sit-ups. I got, like, a, a little pull-up bar and shit. Yeah. So, like, that's something that I've been doing lately, trying to work out so I can keep myself in shape. I'm getting a little fat and shit. I drink too much beer th- over the winter. <laughs> that's the thing, too. As long as you uh, – with this whole – the with the pandemic, it's, like, the big thing that a lot of people don't realize is if you keep yourself in shape and you keep yourself healthy, that's more chance that no matter how bad this gets – you're not going to get it because you're continuously healthy. Yeah, true that. And that's that was like one of the big things that I learned when I was looking into it was like the people who have high immune systems and keep themselves well, those are the people that literally close to have no chance to even getting it. Yeah. I've so always like, been the type of person where like if I if I if if any type of like sickness is on my radar – like I was saying before, like I fucking shut it down, dude. I'm like, and if I do mm-hmm. get sick, I'm taking like five showers a day. I'm fucking, I'm doing everything from the most like hippie shit. Like basically at the end of the day, when, when you get sick, I don't know about coronavirus, but just in the, you know, in general, my philosophy is like sleep and piss. So basically rest <laughs> and drink mad fluids and piss that shit out and drink, You know, if you got a sore throat with the orange juice, like, just like go, like go ham on everything. Take fucking, take NyQuil, fucking do a neti pot, take orange juice, fucking just go ham. I'll take the shower and change it. So it's like the one fucking gnarly bead. Yeah. I'll put it right on my sinus, dude. And I just like, you know. I don't know. No, nah, but I know what you mean. I know exactly what you mean because I'm the same way. Whenever I feel like I'm getting sick, I'm drink. I'm I'm not eating no more junk. I'm straight drinking tea and eating soup. There you go. That's how. And that's then- how my grandfather raised me. You sick? Tea and soup. Make sure you get some some rest. Take a nice hot shower. You'll be good. Yeah, and just like like you said, don't fuck around. Like don't sit around and wait to get. Gee, I think I'm getting sick, and you're just sitting. There, like I was saying before, I think I'm getting sick, and I'm fucking partying all night and going to Taco Bell and fucking you know like sleeping on my buddy's floor and fucking you know cat hair and shit all over myself mm-hmm. and you know what I mean? Is this like I don't know, man? But I. <laughs> All that being said, <laughs> I'm obviously not the expert. I'm not a fucking medical. I'm not a doctor, and I I don't even play one on TV, dude. Neither- <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. That was a good one. So I who I'm just we're just talking here, you know. We're just shooting the <laughs> shit, but fuck it. That's what that that also falls back into what we were talking about earlier. It's all about the person. And how they were raised and shit like that. Yeah. It's like me, I was I was I was raised to if you're getting sick, if you feel like you're getting sick, knock that knock it right out. There you go. Take yeah. it take take it take it out before it takes you out. Yeah. Yeah. Take and that's it, something like Take a day out like of your that. life. Take a day out of your life to rest and sleep so you don't lose a week or two from getting sick. That's the way I look exactly. at it. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yep. 
I don't even take it. I don't. I don't take it super serious like a lot of people. But you know, I I wash my hands. I yeah. make sure my house is always clean. Like, uh, granted, this was like you know a couple months ago when the shit was first first going off. But uh, I was working at that job, and it was like in this industrial place, like in a in a metal working shop, and uh, a lot of like fucking. A lot of dudes that work with their hands and shit in there, you know? So, it's starting to go down. And like I said, there was no fucking food at the grocery stores. I'm getting a little spooked. But I'm I'm trying to, like, man up and go to work. And I'm in there. And I'm freaking out about this shit, right? And I look over and I see this dude. And it's like everybody's hands are filthy in there. They're all covered with dust and grease and grime and shit. And I see this dude and he's got this bag of, and he's on the floor, mind you, in the middle of the shop. And he's got this bag of Cheetos. And it's almost like a movie, like I can zoom in and see it in slow motion. And he's going into the bag and just taking the Cheeto. He's like, oh, no. And you know how Cheetos, like the the cheese, he's like licking the cheese off of his fucking, he's getting all in there. Like, that's. Oh, He's just like rubbing it all over his face and shit. And I'm just like, I got to get the <laughs> fuck out of here, dude. I'm like, these people are going to fucking die. I'm like, I am out of here. This is insane. <laughs> like Cheetos are literally the worst shit you can put your hand into when dude. you work in like a place where your hands are greasy. Yeah. That's, oh, that's the craziest thing. <laughs> and that's then, like, horrible. And then like, they're like long ass shifts, you know, and you're like, you're like, once you're in there, you're just like in there. So like that happened. And then like. There's like these two dudes, they were like, I think one was the other one's uncle, but they were like the same age. They were like a brother and a cousin. They were brothers or cousins or whatever. They were, but they were like, they were younger than me and they were funny. Like it was, again, it was like a movie. Like this one cat's like, yeah, man, I haven't been feeling so good. And then the other dude's like, yeah, dude, I don't, I haven't been feeling that good either <laughs> lately either. Oh, man. And I'm just like, that's like. Yeah, and the place is like, yeah, dude, we don't have any fucking respirator masks. Like, we couldn't get any of those for you, son. Like, <laughs> I was just like, dude, this place is cooked. Like, no way. Oh, man. And then, dude, I fucking, I, I got, like, I worked those days or 12 hour days. So I got paid for like 24 hours. So I had like 200 bucks. And I went and I bought all these canned goods, dude. And then I'm like, huh fucking quarantine i'm gonna lock it down and i'm in my house and i go to make my first meal of quarantine and i open up the cabinet guess what dude i don't have a can opener so i gotta go back out into society and i go to the store dude no can openers on the shelves what the it was like a black mirror it was black mirror dude i was like i was tripping i was like this is a nightmare man i was like and then I went to another store, no can openers, and it was just, it was a trip, you know? Holy shit. But I will tell you about the story, Has it's a nice story, actually. I decided, I was like, man, everyone's fli- flipping out and just taking and taking. I was like, I I have to do something for some. I got to stop thinking about myself. I'm, I'm panicked. I'm in fear. I'm worried about shit. And... This is at the time I was really worried. So I go, let me go into my neighbor's, like my my neighbor is my landlord and we share a mailbox. So I'm like, let me go into the mailbox and separate out the mail because I've been avoiding the mail. I didn't want to touch the mail. And I'm, like, <laughs> and I'm like, let me separate the mail, get them their mail and I'll get my mail. And once and I made that decision. And when I did that, dude, um, my father, he had actually sent me a can opener in the mail. So it was like the fact oh. that I, you see what I'm saying? It was like the, the that, that good that good karma. It was like I had made the decision to chill out and help somebody. And then and it by, worked out for by you. which helped me. So that was a lesson learned at that time. You know what I mean? I was like, fucking don't, don't fucking, uh, yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? Like, but also, I told my friend about it, and he was like, dude, you know what's fucked up about that? He was like, "Like, in my position, I just moved in here. I'm kind of like a bachelor, gypsy, dirtbag, skateboarder. Like, It makes sense that I don't have a can opener. But 
most people probably have a can, like a lot of people have can openers in their house. So it seems like when that shit happened, it was just people going to the store and being like, what should we buy? Fuck, get a can opener, you know, and just like, yeah. why were all the can openers gone? You know what I mean? That's kind of wild. Like that, I think that's when a lot of people started wearing the most is like you walk into a store and everything is gone. Crazy. And I will say one thing that I noticed, and I've said this to so many people and they all agree with me. When shelves started getting empty, the thing I thought was the funniest was all the toilet paper was gone. All the food was gone. But you could walk into the vitamin aisle and them shit is stocked up. I'm like, bro, this is a flu. 100%. Why are y'all not buying vitamins? 100%. Why are you buying so much damn toilet paper? What is that toilet paper going to do for you? Yeah, exactly. What is, what is it going to do for you if you get sick? Dude, the toilet paper and the paper towel was a thing, too. Again, it was just straight up fear and panic. Like, mm-hmm. I got this kitchenette where, like, I don't have, um, like, a dishwasher. So, and I only, again, I'm like a dirt bag gypsy so i only have like two bowls so it's like if i want to eat i gotta wash these things so i had a moment dude where <laughs> i spilled like a bunch of water out of the sink and i had to get a paper towel and like it was like again like out of a movie it was like oh it like <laughs> it like pained me to like pull down the paper towels like no my paper towel like I'm, and i'm all panicked I'm supposed and to make these last yeah exactly <laughs> and, and then, dude, I had this in the laughter of an insane person. I just started cracking up and laughing at myself because I look over and I go, dude, there's probably 60 T-shirts right over here on the, like you got why you look at you, you can wash your clothes. You got cloth. Yeah, you got t like, what are you worried about this paper towel and how wasteful? You know, paper towel this, paper towel that. Every single time, I was just like, so that's when I just started using old T-shirts instead. You know, I say I, I do. Yeah, I old like, skate shirts that are all ripped and shit. Because I don't, I don't like to be wasteful. Like that's one thing I don't like to waste shit. Because yeah. I, I grew up again on an island. I didn't have a lot of shit. Yeah. So, like I try to conserve as much as I can. Yeah. And like, I blow my nose. I got a fucking T-shirt. People are like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" I was like, "I don't wear this shirt." Yeah. What do you think I'm gonna? Go to the go to the bathroom and waste half the roll of toilet paper to sit here and blow the shit out of my nose. Yeah, I just blow it in a shirt and then throw that shit in the washer. I feel that I've yeah I've done that, and it's like I never thought of myself as a particularly wasteful person, but I will say one I guess positive thing, and hopefully this a lot of people feel like this, and it can make a significant change. Is like I realize how wasteful I was, like because when I was worried about the stores and shit, what I, I was cutting everything like, like my, my, um, you know, I'd get to a certain point with it. Like I said, I was washing dishes all the time. So I'd get, I, you know, I'll start cutting shit with water and I just would start like using less shit. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I realized it, it kind of made me realize how, I was going ham before this happened. I didn't even realize it with things like paper towels and dish soap and, um, and food. You know what I mean? This idea mm -hmm. that there's an endless supply of food and you can just go to the store and fucking go buy a fucking rotisserie chicken or whatever, or a burrito, or what, you know, whatever, anytime you want. It's like all of a sudden I'm fucking, you know, looking at like, okay, I got oatmeal, I got canned goods, I got, you know, like I was strategizing and it made me appreciate what I fucking like, you know, conserving in a way, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and like, if anything, in my opinion, if anything good came from this, it's the fact that it teaches a lot of people who are wasteful to not be. Yeah. Because like so many people conserve so much, like so much stuff that they, before this, they would have been like, oh, they grab a toilet paper, they grab like paper towel just to wipe their mouth from an ice cream sandwich they ate. Right. And it's one little wipe, one little wipe on two sheets of to on uh, paper towel and then throw it away. Exactly. And like, it's and it's now like I have homies who, who used to do that. And now I, I go to my homies houses or whatever. They're like one piece of toilet paper, like one piece of paper towel. And they're like wiping their face. They'll fold it up into a, like they'll fold it up. And then put it to the side so they can use it later. Yeah. 
Yeah, if I need a paper oh towel nowadays, I just I go to the thing and I just peel off a little fucking tiny like thirty <laughs> thirty like, percent yeah. job, dude. Yeah. Little thirty percent. I take what I need. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like shit that we thought was like a necessity or something that we thought was like we needed in life. It's like now that a lot of people are quarantined, they realize like shit. I could have just been. I didn't even need that. I could have just done live my life without even having to do half the shit I've done because it was not actually necessary. Hopefully people take it easy on themselves in a sense. You know what I mean? Like, um, yeah, I'd hate for people to fucking be, feel like they're trapped inside and feel like, why didn't they do this? Or why didn't they say this? Or if they could just go back in time and, you know, it's like, I guess maybe as skaters, we're kind of, we naturally live in the moment. It's like our, you know, it's kind of how we are by nature. So it's like, I know for speaking for myself, I feel pretty lucky about the life that I've lived thus far from, from 1980 to 2020. To me personally, it was a pretty magical time where I got to skate and fucking cruise all around the USA and make friends and fucking, you know, play music and eat food and fucking, oh, yeah. you know, like, so like. I'm proud and grateful of like the life that I got to have, you know, like I'm not saying it's over or whatever, but I'm just saying like, I feel super fortunate and lucky. And like, if it was all over, like I could rest at peace with what I've done and the experiences that I've had. And I, I would hate for people to feel now like they're, they're trapped inside or something. And like, if I had only learned how to play the piano, you know, like, mm -hmm. yeah, or, or whatever it is, you know. Um, so I guess what I'm trying to say, I'm not trying to, I'm, I'm trying to make a, a, an uplifting positive point. And I'm saying, like, I think we as skaters are lucky that we are, we're kind of in touch with living in the moment by just by the way that we are. You know what I mean? Yeah, just, it's always, I feel like, that's something good that comes from being a skateboarder, especially in a situation like this. It's like a lot of skateboarders get put into positions where they can't always skate like they want to, or they can't always do what they want with skateboarding. Mm. So it's like, you have to work with what you got. Yeah. And a lot of people, a lot of people don't see it like that. They're like, Oh, I can do what I want to do. So that's what I'm going to do. And now that this whole quarantine thing is in effect, a lot of people are like, fuck, I can't do anything my life's like over and it's like you gotta i i know what you mean though like i wish there was more people that seen it from that perspective like there's it's not like it's the end but it's more like it could you gotta see the bright side of it like it could be a new beginning for you to learn things you never could before yeah yeah or it's just like i like the way that i look at it is like like I will like, we don't know what's coming next or like, I, I don't know what the next 40 years from now will be like, but I can say that the last 40 years have been pretty kick-ass from where I'm sitting, you know, uh, granted that's like really oversimplifying. Like a lot of things obviously have gone wrong in the past 40 years as far as society, politics, culture, whatever. But yeah, I'm just saying from like, it's, 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 it's it's been pretty great and like i'm i'm just trying to be like a, on the more grateful tip of like i'm not trying to focus on what i don't have or like lament what i lost i'm trying i'm trying to look at it and go fuck man like you know like dude we killed it like we got to do so much rad shit a lot of people think because there's like a quarantine thing like their lives just came to a stop yeah, like you can like, still fulfill something in your life. Exactly. You know, you can all there's I guarantee you every at least 90 percent of 90 percent of humanity in this case has something that they've always wanted to do in their life. And they couldn't because they were always too busy or something. Yeah. Now this gives people a chance. Like you got to look. That's what I'm saying about like looking on the bright side. It's like it gives people a chance to have time to do things that they never had time to do before. Dude, honestly, even if it's just reading, man, I've been I've been trying to make it a point to like you know, at least I'm not as good about it as I should be. I'd like to say at least once a day, but at least once every couple of days actually just read. 
just like read whether it's a novel or whatever like a bo- a physical book that I pick up and read and I don't listen to any music and I don't fucking deal with the phone or the computer or anything and it's just like cuz it's like <laughs> I know it sounds so like it, I'm like going to sound like reading rainbow or whatever but it's like it's so <laughs> like it's like it's actually magical dude it's like it's this thing it's like it reading kind of sucks for like the first like 45 seconds you're like oh this is uncomfortable i'm like holding this book and my fucking my nose itches or whatever but you start to get into this shit and it's like it's so good for your brain and it's so entertaining Mm -hmm. and it's so much better than in a lot of ways watching a movie or whatever and it's just like I don't know. I, I and I almost do it as like I go out of my way to do it because I feel like it's going away. Like it's gonna like it's gonna dip off the like, earth, dude. Like yeah. no one's gonna read shit. Ev- yeah, everything everything that you could read, you could either like nowadays they have uh what are those like audio books or whatever. Exactly. Fucking download a fucking book and you're not even reading. Someone's reading to you the whole time. Yeah, and you're usually doing something like, else, you know? Yeah. And it's like I understand that in some ways, but it's like, I also understand the fact of like sitting there and reading a physical book. Cause like, even to this day, I would much rather like read like a Harry Potter book or something like that than watch the movie. Yeah. Because like in the, and the things about books too is like the books always have so much more of a story to tell than a movie. Oh yeah, man. And that's like one of my favorite parts about like reading is that there's so much stuff that you could read in a book that if they made a movie of it, I guarantee you there's stuff that you would have read in the book that wasn't even in the movie. I'm almost bummed at how little I do read nowadays compared to when I was a kid, dude. When I was a kid, man, fuck, I would read shit. I feel that heavy. You know, a, talking a, about it a, now, I'm like, I used to be a book nerd. Like a book a week like, at times. I would just dust a book in a week, no problem. Just fucking, you know, mm-hmm. every night read fucking 25, 50 pages, whatever it was. And and then, you know, seven days I'd read a whole book. And it was like, I'd just keep going like that. And um, yeah, it's like, a, it's like lost. I don't know. I don't know. Mm-hmm. if it, Hopefully there's kids out there that still do that, but I, I don't know. I mean, I'll tell you right now, my kids read. My son reads more than I think I ever read. I give him that. Hell yeah. He loves he loves books. How old's your son? Uh my son is ten and my daughter's four. Hell yeah, man. That's rad. How are they doing during the oh, these, good. these times? Good right now. My daughter's mom is a super clean freak. So my daughter's good and my son he's he's for his age, he's real smart. He knows, like, when the whole mask thing started, he was wearing a mask before I was. Anything you want to say? Is there any knowledge you want to drop, or is there? Uh, I mean, depends on the, the subject. Just but, in um, general, I mean, uh, if uh, if uh, if we were to if we were to be wrapping it up or winding it down, is there anything that we should definitely discuss that we have not? Um, I would, I mean, one thing I did want to talk about was, um, what do you call it? Actually, it was a question I had for you because I know you were probably skating around that time. Like how, like, I, I always wanted to know, like, how was, how was it skating then compared to it is now? Like, would you say it was more like a, of like a skate life then than it is now? Like more people were like about it on a daily basis do you think man that's an interesting way to frame it up um like i think there's a lot of people that would say the obvious answer is oh back then it was 100% skate life and we were skate rats and it was subculture and punk rock and we were running from the cops and the jocks were trying to beat us up and to some degree that's all true And, like, I think back then there was, like, a spirit where it was, like, I was so proud to be a skater. And it was, like, any other skater from 100 miles around, like, we were down. We were a tribe. Like, we were, like, if you came from any other town and you met up, you were just, like, that was, like, your shit. I think 
now there's more people that do it and there's more people that like I'm not saying there's more people that do it that are um not as pa- like like I said everyone seemed very passionate back then but I will say that now I've also seen because of traveling and stuff I've seen time and time again there's like there's modern people that I've met that are like younger than me that are just getting into it that are so psychotically down and they're just like the bug bit them and they're just like they're possessed to skate and it's like they're like they're like like skate life there's it's still like dude i've been to so many skate parks and seen so many locals and just people that are just that's all they do they skate for eight hours a day they get drunk with their homies they fucking go on missions they film they edit that's like you know, and I almost think like now with YouTube and everything and the way that everybody's so good and the way that all sort of styles and board shapes are accepted and shit, it's like there's so much skating shit to geek out on when you're not skating that it's like for me, it's almost like a disease. Like it's hard to I'm always stoked to the point where I get bummed out on it because I have other shit to do. Like I should pay bills and like fucking do shit. That's not skating, but I I'm so in love with it and addicted to it that it's like it, it's a, it never ends. And there's like, they got video games, they got podcasts, they got fucking Mm -hmm. everything. It's like, so I think like skate life is definitely on hardcore right now if you're willing to Word. tap into it you know it's what you make it it's what you make it you know exactly Word. like like dude you 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 like you take it not that you don't have fun but you take it serious in a way you go out you work hard you get your tricks you film you find people to fucking film and help you put footage together and like you take it you're passionate about it and I think there's a lot of people out there that are, and I'm not talking about, oh, I'm trying to be a superstar and go to the Olympics and get the gold. It's like, it's in the, <laughs> doing it is what makes it like, that's what gets it. What makes it worth it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's like, when you wake like, I just know, dude, I know from dealing with you and I'm the same way. It's like, there's people out there that they wake up. And they're not sponsored and they're not pro and they're not fucking Tony Hawk and they don't have a million dollars. But they wake up and they every day, no matter what it is, a scenario, they try to, doesn't matter how old they are, they go, boom, What what's the scenario today? What are we doing? What are we filming? Are we doing a podcast? Are we making a t-shirt? Are we going on a trip? Like, I know that's the way that I feel like is like, what am I doing today to contribute to the big pile of skateboarding that's out there? Be it actually skating with my friends or making some content or watching another video or whatever it is, is like there's something every day that is like somehow, I don't know. I could go on and on, man. I would ramble, <laughs> but it's like there, there, there's, there's no shortage of um, like skate, culture to consume and you don't have to get overwhelmed by it if you have like a a, like like a pure heart and you're like really truly passionate about it like it's fucking great you know like i don't yeah and and i like it now i always say like i like it a little bit better now as an adult than because like i don't have to fucking beg someone to take me to a skate park like I can just get in my car, drive to a skate park. I go to a shop, fucking buy a board. I'm an adult. You know what I mean? It's not like when I was a kid, it was like, but by the same token, everything back then was so magical. Like just going to a a, a backyard with a mini ramp back in the day was like this magical thing where you would be riding that high for six months. Like, I can't believe we went to so-and-so's house and there was a ramp there and we got to skate and fucking everyone left us alone. Like it wasn't even about progressing. It was just about the experience of the adventure, you know, and, and friendship at the end of the day, it was really all about friendship, 
you know? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, who can beat that? Uh, nothing really beats that nowadays. You know? Yeah. And, and again, yeah. like, just trying to be positive with it, like, I know there's a lot of cynical people out there that, like, it's real easy to hate on the modern style and the modern shit, but, like, like it it is what you make it like instagram Mm -hmm. like think of all the fucking like we're saying at the beginning of the conversation like think of all the fucking random homies and shit that you have from instagram like from that are like skate homies that are like you might not know them but if you got to know them they would be your straight homie just like this where it's Mm -hmm. like you know what i mean they're out there dude like we we're where it's like skate skate life is for real yeah we're out there oh yeah you know (laughs) <laughs> Word. Oh yeah. And some That's of us dope. are fucking your cops and your plumbers and your fucking teachers and your politicians, so you better <laughs> you better watch out. <laughs> it's <a> shit street. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Hell yeah, Josh. Oh yeah, man. Dude, thank yeah, you. I appreciate it. No, I appreciate you doing this, man. What it is, it's it's freedom. It's like there's no freedom like that where you're just like the very I mean, we know because we do it, but it's like the way that it feels like you feel so free when you ride a skateboard. And then so people can sense that and they can see it. And then it's also like we all kind of like look wild and we kind of like dress how we want. We do what we want. And we're in and out, up and down, off the curve. We're going everywhere. There's a sign that says don't go there. We go there anyway. Um, mm-hmm. And then at the same time, we can you know, get right in line and put on a tie and be nice to your grandma and shit. And it's like, there's a certain freedom that comes from being a skateboarder that it's like, you can kind of wiggle and wiggle around in society. It's like, you're not really like, it's not as rigid as like other shit. You know what I mean? Like how many people are we all friends with where like, we wouldn't even, we never would have met just cause, but it's cause of skating. Yeah. And so it's like, I think like, people that bums people out they're like they they're jealous of that freedom it's a freedom that's like Mm -hmm. you don't not everyone has access to that type of freedom you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and like you're saying they it's like a maybe not jealousy thing but it's like when people see like oh they they literally just they feel like we do whatever we want kind of pisses them off because they're like okay didn't we kick these kids out of here yesterday why are they here again yeah, and this is a continuous thing. You know what I'm saying? It's like most people would think, "Oh, I'm I, I got kicked out of here. I'm not coming back." Yeah. To us, it's it's like an adventure. It's like we're exploring. There's a sign that says, like you were saying, there's a sign that says, "Do not enter." We see a ledge or a rail, we're gonna enter. Like it's all about the terrain, and it's like I'm not skating like on some like old ladies like in front of her house like just to be a menace you know what i mean like just to be a problem it's like that's just like where the terrain happens to be at you know and Mm -hmm. uh it is weird to me that like there's like this certain like i've had this conversation with my friend and she was like (laughs) we were talking about like skating versus graffiti and she was like so i'm like yeah i'm like it's like, I just can't help it. It doesn't matter, like, if it's a hospital, a lawyer's office, fucking my ex-girlfriend's house. Like, it doesn't matter. If there's a cool <laughs> spot there, I will go there and skate it. It doesn't matter. I'll figure yeah. out how to skate it. Like, I don't care. And it goes against, like, it's not right at times, like, to skate in front of this old lady's house. You know what I mean? And so my friend's like, dude, so you're saying, like, like, if someone came to your house and fucking wrote graffiti on the side of your house and you got mad about it and they're like, Oh man, I just had to do it like that wall. It just looks so good. Like I, (laughs) I had to just throw up a piece right there. Like I couldn't help myself. She's like, what would you say? And I'm like, yeah, I see your point. You know, like I, I get it, but, um, I don't know. It's like, it's interesting to me how like I look at myself as a good person but I'm totally willing to fucking, there's a part of my brain that I'm willing to go to and just block out certain shit and just be like, 
dude, I, I'll like I've skated in cemeteries. I would I'll skate at a funeral home, um, yep. hospitals, police stations. <laughs> I like ah, uh, you know, yeah, fuck. I I will skate pretty much anywhere. Uh, there's no like there's no like faux pas or place where I can't imagine yeah. that I would skate. If my if I, I can skate. throw my board down and my wheels are rolling, I'm there. It's just ingrained in you. It's like especially growing up around here in the suburbs where there was only like a handful of like curbs, like a two skate. Yeah. Like there was no spot, so it was like that's just the routine. You go there, you get kicked out. We'll fucking see you tomorrow and then get kicked out again. It's just like, and then you do that for six years and then you fucking move to Boston. You know, like you get out of here, you know, <laughs> like, or you quit skating. You get a fucking car and a girlfriend and a job. And that's what happened to most people. You know, they just grew up and stopped skating. That's but. true. I think I have like, there's like maybe three people out of like the 20 to 30 people I grew up skating with that still skate. Which is like wicked sad because growing up, a lot of the kids I grew up with in Lawrence were like way fucking better than me. Yeah, and they all they all kind of just like left it. Yeah, and I'm like that's just. I but feel like yeah, that that also falls back into the whole passion thing that you know you just it's not there, it's not there. Dude, not every day of my life that I've gone skating have I wanted to. Like, there were some days where I was hurt or hungover or it was fucking 30 degrees and I really didn't fucking feel like skating. But I went and I made myself did it anyway. Probably because of ego. Probably because, like, you know. No, seriously, because, like, there was probably a time where, like, I wanted to fucking, like, tell myself that I was a skater. And that was what I did. But the thing is... And this is what I try to explain to people that like if if they feel like they've lost that passion is like once you push around for five, ten, fifteen minutes, it's gonna it's, you're gonna in spite of yourself, you're gonna have fun. Like you're gonna enjoy it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how you know what I mean? It's like um, Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. And and I've just always been able to trick myself into never losing that passion. And and it's it's kind of weird when people. I mean, dude, it's I get it. it. I get it. If you if you have a family, a wife, a kid, a kids, excellent job or something that's like gonna take you in a certain direction away from skating, that's like a great positive thing for your life. God bless, hundred percent. Like, go get them. That's you know, I got mad support. But if you just want to fucking not skate so you can just sit around and go to bars and fucking watch TV and sit on the couch, what the fuck? I don't get yeah, that. Like, that's, that's you know, I've never got that. Yeah. But, yeah. See, like, what, like, I know what you mean, though, about, like, not losing the passion. That's, like, why one of my favorite things about skateboarding is being able to just always learn something new because that's my favorite thing about it. Yeah. Like, I, can not, I could not want to skate one day. And then I could watch a video of someone do something, and I'm like, oh shit, I could do this trick into that trick. Oh, well, oh, now I guess I'm going to the skate park. And it's like, it just becomes like a natural thing after a while. Yeah. You know, like, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll kind of like surprise myself or stoke myself out where like it'll be like, I, I'll, I'll be tired or hurt and don't like, not expecting very little. And then end up like getting a clip or something, you know what I mean? And something that I'm going to like eventually use and I'm like stoked on it or, or like, and it's just like, it comes out of blue or land a new trick or just like do something that I never thought of in my life. And it's like, you did it that day when you were just like, so burnt to begin with, you know what I mean? And it, mm -hmm. it worked out so good. Like, oh, so it's weird. It's like, uh, I don't know. And then some days you're just totally off, you know, and that happens too. Where you just, yeah. You know, there's I know that. Too. I know that feeling. This, <laughs> you know, I had one of those days right. recently, man. I just, I, I literally, I just, I, I put down my board to just push, like just 
set it down and put one foot on it and just pushed and just slammed. Like, it was the weirdest thing. I can't think of any other time that I've done that in my life. I put my board down, put my front foot on, pushed once with my back foot, and by the time I could get my back foot to my tail, I, like, leaned into my nose and ate shit and fucking landed right on my palm and opened my shit up. It was just, like, it was all bloody. I was, like, it was wild. I was pissed. Those are the worst. Yeah. But, uh... But, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Fucking... I like I like how we wrapped it up and then talked for like another forty minutes. That's sick. <laughs> All right. Hell yeah. All right, but yo, for real though, I appreciate you having me on. Oh, dude, it was amazing. Yeah, this is good shit. Thank you. Yeah, man. Thank you for real. This is good. This is good shit. I feel like you know. Oh yeah. H- high quality. So. Oh yeah, high quality stoke for the folks in quarantine. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> No doubt. Yeah, man. All right, man. Yo, hopefully, I'll see you around soon and catch a session. Yeah, man. For sure. <laughs> oh, wrong way. My camera's this way. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Bam. Peace, right. homie. Later.